In this video, we're going to take a look at problem solving with Android Studio. Now, by problem solving, I mean solving issues that come up with your application. In other words, take a look at the application that I have here. I click the camera button, and the application dies. That's the kind of problem I'm talking about solving. Android Studio gives us several tools to help with this process. First, the 6 Logcat window contains a running list of any logs or exceptions that were generated by your program. So look here for an exception message, because that's key to finding the root cause of an exception and thus solving it. An exception will often also have a stack trace, which shows you a line of code where something went wrong in your program. And that's a helpful place to put a debugger breakpoint, because that allows you to walk through the program at your own pace and see the value of variables live while the program is running. Some important keys we can use here. F7 will let us step into a method and watch it execute. F8 will execute a method and run to the next line, and F9 will simply continue the program. Evaluate expression is a really powerful tool in the debugger because you can type in an expression like an algorithm or a formula or even a variable name, and then hit evaluate and see what it would evaluate to given where the debugger is right now and the value of all the variables in the debugger right now. One more I'll mention for completeness is the number 9 version control window. Now I cover this in a separate video so I'm not going to cover it here, but that's really handy for working through any version control issues like merging or branching or anything else like that that you might experience with Git, GitHub, Mercurial, or anything of that nature. Let's try that last example again, but this time we're going to keep Android Studio open. Take a look down at the bottom and you notice this is where we have some really handy tool windows, like the version control window I mentioned before, shows you a little graph of the different pull requests and the like, but the focus for this demo is Logcat. So I'm going to keep Logcat open and you'll notice it's going to show me some logging information as I'm walking through the app. I'm going to press on the camera button, Note the application dies, and when the application dies, we get a stack trace. And this is what's really important for debugging. So a seasoned developer could probably look at this and get an idea of what's going on. It says permission denial, Android media action image capture. If you don't know what that means, just throw it into your favorite search engine. And you can see here Stack Overflow, Reddit, so on and so forth. You can quickly find out that what's happening is we're trying to invoke the camera without asking for permission first. And for me, that's an easy fix. The Take Photo button here is calling a function called Take Photo. Uh, but Take Photo is directly accessing the camera without asking for permission first. I also have another method I've created called prep take photo, which asks for that permission first. So by adding this in and saving, this will fix that issue. Now, this was a, an example that I created, but it's specific to this scenario. If you need some more information, what I recommend is look here at the stack trace and look for a package name that you recognize, something that you wrote. So in other words, Android OS, that's not something I wrote, Android app, Android X, those are all the core libraries. But when I go down here and I see edu.uc.jonesbr.myplantdiary, I see something that I wrote, and I can click on that, and that's a good place to set a breakpoint. So if the error message alone doesn't give us enough information to solve the issue, this will give us information to set a breakpoint and run it through the debugger, and that's where we can also find a bit more information. Speaking of which, our next, next example will be a, an example where the debugger can help us find the root cause of an issue. So let's take a look at that. Here we have a logic error. You see a plant record up here, and I'm going to fix a spelling issue. We'll make it grown down, just like so. And then I'm going to choose save. But take a look at the record in Firebase over on the right. When I choose save, You'll notice that the record updates, but the longitude blanks out, and that's really weird because over here we have a longitude value. Somehow it got erased, so a logic issue. So in this case, what I'm going to do is snap a breakpoint where that button is. You notice I had a save button. Let's go up and take a look at that. I have btn save set on click listener, and then it's calling save specimen. So why do I set it here? Well, when I press the button is when it sets off this chain of events where it's saving my specimen. I know something is going wrong after I press that button, so this is a logical place to put that breakpoint. Now I've made a change and I'm going to press save. 
Notice as soon as I press save that breakpoint lights up in blue. Now I want to see what's going on in the save specimen function, so I'm going to press F7, which means step me into this function. F8 would be step over, which means run this function and move to the next without actually looking into the function. But I press F7, and I see I have a store specimen function. I'm still looking for something I can take a look at here, so I'm going to choose F7, which takes me into store specimen. Now I take a look and I F8, which steps over a line, and now you see it's taking the specimen it's about to persist. Now this is where the debugger gets really powerful because I can take a look at the value of variables in real time as this debugger is running. And when I look here I see, well latitude's populated, but longitude is not. And then I look above and I see my logic error, I don't have a populated longitude. But here's another really cool thing about the debugger. Not only can we look at the value of variables in memory, we can change them as well and do some what-if analysis. So I'm going to say longitude 10.00. I'm going to go ahead and plug that in, and then I'm going to choose F9 to continue, because I think I found my problem. And I'm going to choose F9 again. And sure enough, take a look at what happened in Firebase. We see that it has updated the longitude to that value that I plugged in in the debugger. But from here, the fix is fairly obvious because I see, ah, gosh, I just forgot to say, I forgot to put the actual value in there from LBL longitude dot, uh, let's longitude value dot text dot to string. And now let's see what happens when we relaunch the application and save. You see that the longitude value has updated to net minus 77.006, which sure enough is the value that we see here. As a matter of fact, watch what happens when I right click and choose evaluate expression and simply type in specimen and then evaluate. You see, you can see all the values of this specimen object right here in evaluate expression and indeed any expression that you want to evaluate. Just type it in here, hit evaluate, and it will give you the result based on the value of the state of the variables at this point in time in the debugger. So here we've seen how we can use the debugger to get to the root of a logic issue and solve it. So I sure hope this video on problem solving with Android Studio has been helpful, and I look forward to reading your comments. Thank you.